Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and almost died from a drug overdose. Something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. Now, years later, my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. Welcome to On the Road to Freedom. You've joined me in my Texas front yard beside a beautiful maple tree, or at least it was a week ago before these gorgeous golden leaves fell to the ground. You know, Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. And no matter how hard we try, we can't change the season. We can't slow it down and we can't speed it up. We'd love for the tree to stay in full bloom all year long, just as we'd love for certain things in life to stay the same forever. But God said, to everything, there is a season. We're experiencing a new season in this ministry since Mylan stepped into heaven. And recently I ministered my first Sunday service without my beloved in Clarksville, Tennessee at Faith Outreach Church with dear friends, Pastors William and Ginger Luffman. And I'm so thankful for my powerhouse faith sisters, Pastor Drenda Cassie and Terry Bailey, who flew in to be with me and join their faith with mine for the new thing God is doing. Now, before we start the teaching, every time we hear the word, we need to make the same decision Jesus stated in John 8, 31 and 32. If we will continue in the word, then we truly are his disciples and we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. Be encouraged that just as seasons turn, today can be a turning point for you if you choose to step into the new. <laughs> praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Let's give him praise and glory. Thank you, Lord. You know, death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? Thanks be to God who always gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, we have the victory. Hallelujah. And I'm rejoicing with you today that my husband is enjoying that sweet fullness of victory now. Amen. Amen. And enjoying his reward. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I want to thank you for that. You may be seated. Thank you for that kindness. Oh, praise God. As you know, we're not drawn back. We are moving forward by faith. Praise God. And so I'm thankful today to be here with you. And you know, here's the key. When something like this would happen that mine and I were not expecting, what we weren't believing for, right? Mylon would look at me and he would say, Christy, nothing has changed. None of this caught God off guard. None of this caught him by surprise. And he has a plan, it hadn't changed. Here's his plan. His plan is to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us hope and a future. That's the good plan of God. And he would say, Christy, that good plan, it hadn't changed. Amen. So I'm declaring that to you again today. Jeremiah 29, 11, This did not catch God. Anything you're dealing with right now in your life, it did not catch God off guard. It is not a surprise to him. His plan for you has not changed. His plan is to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Praise God. You know, right now, when it comes to a crisis, I want to read you the definition of if you're also in the midst of what you would, would refer to as a crisis, 
It's a stage in a sequence of events at which the trend of all future events, especially for better or for worse, is determined. It means a turning point. This means our future depends on choices we make today. Now I'm going to say right now in this moment, our future depends on choices we're making right now while you hear the word. So I declare today is a turning point for you. And I believe you're going to choose life. I believe you're going to choose the blessing. You know, because what um, it says in Deuteronomy 30, 19, God said, behold, I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Now choose. He's encouraging us. He doesn't want there to be any confusion on this. You choose life that you and your descendants may live. The choices you're making right now in this moment are going to affect your children and your children's children if the Lord tarries, right? But right now, the choices you make are affecting your family and all those who love you. You know, right, I had to make this choice. I had to decide, you know, there were days this got me out of bed. I would say out loud, I choose life. I'm choosing to live. I'm not choosing to be depressed or oppressed. Mylon wouldn't want that for me, and God definitely doesn't want that for me. And here's how, amen. Now here's how I know that, because Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, I've come. Jesus said, I've come that you, to give you life, that you may have and enjoy your life. Have it to the full until it overflows. God does not want you just getting through every day. He does not, it doesn't matter what you're, what you're facing right now. Do you understand no matter what the trial is, no matter what the crisis is, Jesus said, I came that you would have and enjoy your life. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength, right? So that's why every day, Mylon, he'd get up and he'd say, this is the day. I'd hear him coming down the hall and he'd be quoting it. This is the day. And he'd look at me and smile and we'd say it together that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and I will be glad. I will be glad in it. Hallelujah. And so I encourage you today, it's time to choose life. It's a turning point for you, and your future will be blessed when you choose life, the abundant life in Christ. So I'm choosing to live. How about you? (laughs) Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, there is a natural mourning period, obviously, right? But we can't stay there. We can't stay, um, especially, and allow the spirit of grief and sorrow to steal God's good plan from our lives, right? Jesus bore our pain. He he bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows, amen? So that we can live um, in this life triumphantly no matter what we face. Again, even if it's death, again, oh, praise God, Jesus conquered death for us. Death, again, is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. So in, in the midst of this shock that I was dealing with, the adjustment of now, of course, Mylon and I were together. I didn't get to say this in the video, but we were together every single day for 25 years. Only one night we were apart. And after that, he called me crying and said, we're never doing this again. <laughs> he said, he said, I married you to be with you. And so we were together. He was my constant companion, my best friend. So from the time I woke up till I went to bed every night, we shared every moment of every day, if you can imagine, for 25 years. So the adjustment of me just getting through a normal day without my beloved, I could only do by the grace of God. Amen. But praise God, His grace is sufficient. (laughs) Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your word. Oh, praise God for His word. And so in the midst of this, one day I was just on my knees and weeping before the Lord. 
And the Lord spoke to me and he said this. He said, Christy, you have to decide. Once you decide, and that's what I'm talking about, choosing to live. Choosing again to enjoy my life in Christ. He said, you have to decide. I can't make the decision for you. But once you decide and decree a thing, it shall be established for you. He said, Christy, I'm ready to back you. But I can't make the decision for you. Once you decide and once you decree a thing, it will be established. I will back you. And the light of my favor will shine upon your ways. And then he goes further and he says, how do you do that? You know, that explains how to do that. When they make you low, when those circumstances you're dealing with, when those trials, those tribulations, those disappointments you're dealing with, when they make you low, here's how those who believe God, who who trust God, who say they do, here's how we're supposed to respond. When they make you low, you will say, there is a lifting up. (laughs) hallelujah and exaltation one version says has come now that means even in the midst of this circumstance it may look bad but praise God God is turning this situation around for my good amen now why is that because we're just so brilliant no it's because we serve a good God he's the brilliant one right he's the mighty one He's the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angel armies. He is my maker and he is my husband, the word says. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Lord of angel armies is his name. The Holy One of Israel is my redeemer. The God of the whole earth, he is called. So I think he's got me. Amen. And he's got you. He is almighty God. Praise God. So in, I want you to know again, King Jesus, you know, what I'm walking in right now, I don't have my head in the sand. You know, I'm not ignoring uh, this traumatic experience. I can call it that. But here's what I believe the greater one lives in me. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, than anything I could face in this world the greater one is empowering me and strengthening me right now in this moment to overcome and to walk and to live in victory. He's the only one who can turn this around for good, but praise God, he is the one who I serve. (laughs) Hallelujah. How about you, right? He specializes in making a way where there seems to be no way. That is his specialty. He said, I will make a way for you in the wilderness and I'll make rivers flow for you in the desert. Hallelujah. That means streams of abundance flowing to you where others, where it looks like lack, famine, depression, the economy, recession. He'll make rivers of abundance flow for you. That's the God who we serve. Praise God. So, you know, another thing that Mylon would say continually, and we would declare this together, is our latter years will be greater than our former. Amen. In Haggai 2.9, it says, The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. In that place, I will give peace. In those latter years. So this is saying, God saves the best for last for you. In Christ, our best days are always in front of us. They are never behind us. Because we go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Hey, all you precious Team Milan people, let me read you something. (laughs) God said in Acts 1 and verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses 
telling people about me everywhere to the ends of the earth. That's what you're a part of every day. You're not just going witnessing. You are a 24-7 witness all over the world. You're doing your part. We're doing ours, and God's doing his. Love you, Team Island. Thank you. The graveside service, Pastor George, this was one part of the prophetic word that he spoke over me, and I'd like to share it with you. It says, now the baton is being passed. The baton is being passed from heaven to earth. And if Mylon were here right now, he'd be saying, Christy, you take this word that we've given first place in our lives and final authority, and you preach it. Now, I know that's exactly what my honey would tell me. And he says, and then he went further and says, the valiant warrior that is in you, you preach it. Now, I want to refer to this because months before Mylon went to heaven, I was out on a walk and I came back and he said, Christy, I've been talking to the Lord about you. And I said, oh, really? And he said, yes. And he said, he spoke to me and said for me to speak over you continually. You are a mighty woman of valor, of faith, and of courage. Yes. And he would say that over me continually, every day when he would see me, you are a mighty woman of valor, faith, and courage. And you know, I, this reminded me, of course, now I know why. Now I know why the Lord had him decree those words over me, because right now, it's going to take me being strong and very courageous to walk in this next season. And in Joshua 1, 6, and 7, and 9, three times, Joshua is told, be strong and very courageous. After Moses died and Joshua was stepping into his new season, that was the instruction God gave him, be strong I'm going to say it to you also. Be strong. Be very courageous. Amen. It's going to take that in these days that we're living in. Jesus is coming soon. And it's time for the church to rise up no matter what crisis we're facing. Right? And we're in a time of crisis in our nation, in the, with the family, with there's so many areas that we're in that time right now. But we can make the choice that benefits our future right now, but it's gonna take us being strong and very courageous. Philippians 4.13, you've gotta hear this in the Amplified. I have strength for all things through Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything. I am equal to anything. Know why? Because I have a strong will? Well, you know, I am a Texan. And you know, don't mess with Texas. That's a real attitude, right? Is that why? No. I am equal to anything. Why? Because it's through Him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Woo! Hallelujah! Say this after me, I am strong strong. in the Lord Lord. and in the power power. of His might. might. Amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. So in the midst of that, I've been making this confession. I can do all things through Christ, the anointed one and His anointing, which abides in me, strengthens me and enables me to do what I could not do without it. That's what the anointing does for you. No matter how you feel, if you belong to Jesus, that strength, empowerment, enablement, and ability, it abides in you. That strengthens you to conquer in these kinds of situations. 
It enables you to rise above so that others look at your life and they go, wow, these are the people the Lord has blessed. They look at your life and they recognize this is the blessing of the Lord. And I want what you've got, right? And we're able to lead them to Jesus as a result. This is real key to our witness. I don't know what you're facing right now. It may be it's a divorce. Maybe you've lost a loved one that you, a significant relationship in your life maybe has been dissolved. Maybe it's bankruptcy. Maybe you've lost a job. But no matter what you're facing right now, you can rise above and, and, and rise way above. Yeah. Way, 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 way above yeah. in Christ. He wants you to be a witness in the earth for His glory that He is the greater one. Yeah. And He abides in you. Yes, Amen. Amen? And so right now, I'm, you know, my nature, I'm analytical by nature. And so even in this situation, in my effort to try to figure out what happened, right? To ask all those questions that the enemy wants to torment us with. He wants to torment us with questions like why, what if, if only. And I woke up one morning and I heard this in my spirit. Stop. Now, it wasn't an audible voice. It was a prompting. And I just heard, stop asking questions. It only leads to unbelief. Stop asking questions. It only leads to unbelief. Now here's why. It's because Jesus is the answer. And when we focus on Him, He is the Word. When we focus on Him and the Word, the answer becomes bigger than the questions. Amen? And I got that from my pastor, Pastor Terry, so I'm going to give her credit for that. So we focus on when we're in the midst of a situation that we don't understand. You know that faith trust when it doesn't understand. Amen? So when a crisis arises, whatever you may be facing right now in your life, we need to recognize this is another opportunity for us to demonstrate that we trust in God. Yes. Amen. Amen? So the last instruction Mylon gave me on the day he went to heaven, he looked at me, it was the strongest that he spoke that whole day, and he sat up and he pointed at me, and he said, no fear, Christy, do not fear. So I'm going to say that to you, no fear, Do not fear. Amen. Why is that? Because fear is the opposite of faith. And fear will empower the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy. But when you choose to believe God, it'll that's what brings the victory. Whatever's born of God overcomes this world, and this is the victory that overcomes our faith. Whatever's born of God, are you born of God? I am. Well, if you're born of God, you're an overcomer. And Jesus said, you overcome everything in this world. Anything you could face. What I'm facing right now, my faith in God and in His Word causes me to overcome. When I choose to believe. When I choose to trust, even when I don't understand. When I choose to trust when it doesn't make sense. My faith in Him causes me to overcome and rise above. The blessing of the Lord causes you, when you choose life, you choose blessing, the blessing of the Lord causes you to be above only and never beneath. Never. I remember one time we were facing a real intense situation with Mylan's health, and I was under stress, and I let, I let it get to me. I started fighting depression and anxiety and fear. And the Lord spoke to me, and He said, Don't ever let yourself get under anything ever again. Under stress, under pressure. Here's why. Because the blessing of the Lord causes you, Christy, to be above only and never beneath. 
Amen. God's anointing always causes us to rise above. But again, we've got to decide. We've got to draw the line in the sand and decide. This is a quality decision Brother Copeland has taught us. You draw the line in the sand, a quality decision. You step over that line and it's a point of no return. Once you step over that line, you're never going back, right? So what the Lord spoke to me in that, Christy, you've got to decide. Once you decide and you step over that line, I trust God. I trust in the Lord with all of my heart. I lean not on my own understanding. There it is. Even when I don't understand, I lean not on my own understanding. I trust in my God with all my heart. I acknowledge Him in all my ways. Lord, I acknowledge I need your help. Lord, I acknowledge I need you, Jesus. Jesus, I need you. And when we acknowledge Him, He will direct our paths. He gives us light for each step. But here's the key, you gotta take the step. You've gotta take it. He will not take. He won't take that step over that line for you. And I'm telling you, I was on my knees in prayer, tears running down my face when I decided I'm taking that step. I'm choosing to trust in the Lord my God with all my heart. I will not lean on my own understanding. My God, I judge God faithful. Amen. I judge God faithful. Praise the Lord. And at that moment, it began to turn. The grief and the sorrow that had been such a heaviness, such an oppression. I didn't know how to get from here to where I am right now. But when I took that first step, light came. He gives us His Word as a lamp to our feet. It is a light to our path. But we've got to take the step. No matter if you do it with tears running down your face, no matter how you take the step, you take the step in faith and you judge God faithful. Amen. Will you say that after me? I judge God faithful. Hallelujah. I believe you were greatly encouraged today by the word to courageously step into your new season. For continued encouragement, please check out all of our free faith resources at mylan.org, especially on the road to freedom on demand 24 seven for any episodes you may have missed. Get the word for the week on the go with our podcast and our Church on the Run daily digital devotional. These are all ways for you to stay in the word because we know that will keep you. Now I'm gonna pause here because I need your help. Mylon and I said this together on 332 episodes. So are you ready? Stay in the word because that will keep you, here we go, on on the the road road to freedom. freedom.